boy. And welcome. So I'm going to officially introduce and welcome you once again, HPTV. So um, I think that's, that's going to be the name of the show. That's going to be the name of this weekly live hangout, HPTV, Healthpreneur TV. It sounds better, HPTV. It's got a nice rhyme to it, nice ring to it. What do you guys think? Pretty good? All right. So hope you're having an amazing week and thanks for joining me once again. Today we're going to be talking about the love-hate exercise that is going to like literally 10 extra productivity and reduce stress and overwhelm in your life. We'll get to that in just a moment. Before we get to that, let me know where you are joining me in or joining me in from. So in the comments, just type in, hey, I'm joining you from Toronto, which is where I'm at, or San Diego, which is where apparently everyone is, everyone is at. Let me know in the comments. Introduce yourself, say, yo, what's up? What's up, Yuri? How's it going? All right. So I hope uh, if you guys if you guys joined me last week, we talked about uh, I was sharing seven really cool insights I got from my two month off, like my staycation, pretty much my sabbatical. And uh, that video is posted up on the YouTube on my channel, uh, as well as in the health runner group, if you're a part of our community. And if you missed it, then hey, you're shit out of luck. I mean, it's still some, there's some good stuff in there. Andrea Webb from Apple Valley, California. So is that where, well, I just had an idea in my head that like Apple literally took over, like Apple, the company took over this entire valley in California and then named it after them. But I'm sure that didn't happen. So welcome, welcome everyone. Again, let me know if you're just joining in, where you are joining me in from. Joining me in from, that doesn't even make sense where you are joining from. Okay, so this, again, this HPTV is all about helping health and fitness professionals turn your expertise into a thriving online business that creates more impact, more income, more freedom. These awesome live hangout episodes are gonna be kind of nuggets of ways that you, know, you can take these ideas and become a more effective entrepreneur, a more impactful entrepreneur, and really serve a bigger audience without like stressing and overwhelming and killing yourself in the process, which is what a lot of people seem to value in the world of uh, business for whatever reason. Shiva, welcome from Essex, UK. Yeah, high desert action, cool in the California. All right, so here's here's what we're gonna do. Um, I'd like you guys to take out a sheet of paper. We're gonna do this exercise together, okay? Now, I have this, so I'm gonna use this as my example. So this is my little, my post-it notes. We're gonna be talking about the love-hate exercise. All right, and what we're gonna do here is we're gonna take out a sheet of paper and on one side, I'll show you what this is gonna look like. I don't like using the word hates, but you know, I think for the purpose of this exercise, it's maybe a bit more impactful. Okay, so what you're gonna do is you're gonna take the sheet of paper and on one half, you're gonna write down things that I, or you're gonna write down love and then hate. At the top of this, as it pertains to business specifically, because that's what we're talking about here, what you're gonna do is you're gonna come up with things that you love to do on the one side, okay? You're gonna write these things down. On the other side, you're gonna, you're gonna write down everything else, everything that, you, that, that doesn't bring you joy and is not within your wheelhouse or your unique ability goes in the, I don't like doing this, or I pretty much hate it. So let me give you a perfect example of this because like, oh my God, this stuff drives me nuts. Okay, so last night, um, let me backtrack for a second. So earlier this summer, instead of getting uh, like a lawn care group of people to cut our lawn and mow our lawn and do all the weed whacking and stuff, because we, we don't have a huge lawn. I mean, I mean, it's manageable to cut it ourselves, but last year we had somebody do it for us, which makes a lot of sense. So this year, hopefully my wife Amy isn't watching this because I mean, I love her to death, but this was like, sometimes decisions like this, they don't, they don't end up you know, going too well. So she decided that she didn't wanna pay or she didn't think it was worthwhile paying $70 a week to have somebody cut and maintain our lawn. And I said to her, I'm like, listen, I don't agree with you. However, you're gonna go, out. so she said she's gonna go in and buy a lawnmower and a weed whacker, and she was going to mow the lawn once a week. Cool, right? So I was thinking, I'm like, okay, you do that because I want no part in that. Now, 
unfortunately, I was off for two months, right? So I'm not just gonna be like, you know, she's working, she has her own jewelry business and stuff. So she's working, I'm doing like nothing. I'm just, you know, I don't have really anything to do other than like chilling and playing tennis and stuff. So naturally, I end up cutting the lawn because, you know, I wanna, you know, give her some time to do her thing. And last night, I cut the lawn again. It was probably about a two week, almost a week and a half, two weeks since I had cut it previously. And as I'm cutting the lawn, it just reminded me of like, and this is a perfect story to share with you guys today because I cannot stand doing a $10 an hour job, like cutting the lawn. I love having nice grass and I love having a, like a well manicured garden and lawn. I don't know, maybe it's like the soccer player in me that like likes that beautiful grass. But that doesn't mean that I need to be doing it. I would much rather pay somebody $70 to cut my damn grass and I don't have to worry about it because like it's been so hot in Toronto that I don't really want to cut the grass when it's really hot outside. I, like, and then like I'm, I'm working and then like the kids come home and then I don't want to mow the lawn when the kids are home because then it's like two hours or an hour and a half out of my day and I can't spend it with them. It's just a waste of time. So this exercise is going to help you get clarity on the things in your business as well as in your life that you love to do and everything else that really needs to be just taken off your plate. Does that make sense? So let's, let's, um, I want to put, I want to kind of put this out to you guys before I give you some examples from my life and business. What is one thing you love to do in your business? And what is one thing you hate doing? Like, you're like, oh my God, I want to get this off my plate now. Like, give me an example. And just in the comments, like, one thing you love to do, one thing you can't stand doing. Just go type away. So as I'm waiting for your answers, I'm not going to say a single other word until I get some answers here. So we're just going to stand in silence and look at each other. One thing you love to do, one thing you hate to do in your business. So if it helps, let me jog your memory a bit here or jog your kind of your, your imagination. In my business, I love doing video. That's why I've committed to doing Facebook Live on a weekly basis. And I realized after my two month sabbatical, as I mentioned last week, I don't need to do anything in my business other than video. So yesterday, <clears throat> we did a video shoot in my house for uh, one of the funnels that we're working on. And it took me you know, a couple days to come up with the, the, probably about a week to really kind of like come up with the foundation for that and like the psychology behind it and obviously the content within those videos. And then I shot the videos yesterday with our, with our videographer. So that stuff I love to do. And our, our videographer, he's like, he's like, dude, you don't even need a teleprompter. Like I've, I've never seen anybody just like rhyme stuff off um, like that. He's like, if you use a teleprompter, it would be so much more unnatural and it would be, it wouldn't be you. So for me, that is like the one thing I love doing and I do better than anybody else, I believe, you know, at least within our team. So, so that is the one thing that I spend a lot of my time doing, right? Because everything else can be delegated to somebody else. The stuff I hate doing includes editing written words, right? So editing writing in general, actually. Editing writing, um, that's one of the pet peeves I have with having a published book is like the back and forth with the editors. I don't, I don't want to read you know, all these little edits and notes. So did you mean one tablespoon or 1.5 tablespoons of this? Or, or, uh, one onion, is that a medium sized onion or a small onion? I, I don't care, it's an onion. So stuff like that drives me crazy. And the whole idea with this exercise is you focusing on the things you love doing and you start to create that hate column as job descriptions for other people. What's going on, Josh? So Josh is saying he loves mapping it all out. The big picture, hates analyzing conversions, why something isn't selling. Welcome to the club, right? Every single one of us, I guarantee will have a very, very similar uh, type of approach. Right? There are very, very few people that are true entrepreneurs who love the nitty gritty details and don't like the big strategy and big picture. Andrea Webb is saying, can't stand cleaning house with four kids, never ending job, love to help people move on to the next phase of their lives. Perfect. Awesome. So Andrew, let me ask you this. Can you have somebody clean your house for you? So you know, we've got three kids. We have a lot of glass in our, in our house. Um, 
all like basically surrounds the stairs so the kids are always you know are always touching that and we have a cleaning lady who is tremendous and we have her she's actually coming in tomorrow comes in about once a month but if for us for her to come in every single week it actually doesn't make sense because our kids would just dirty the glass that much quicker and for the other things like the deep cleaning stuff like the bathrooms and some of the floors we find that once a month is good enough for us we found that getting our kids involved in the cleanup process is part of their responsibility for being alive and living in our house so that's kind of the way we do it. i'm like listen you know you don't want to make your bed you don't want to whatever clean up your stuff well well i don't want to make you lunch how about that i don't want to send you to school with a lunch cool so if you want lunch make your bed so in our house we get our kids involved from a really young age to um to have them take a bit of responsibility so that's just you know a little bit of a ramble and and my thoughts on that um okay so uh what you're gonna find as well is on the the love side is probably gonna be a little bit shorter quite a bit shorter you might you might have just you know three four five things i don't know just a few things and then everything else is gonna be a long extensive list i don't like looking at numbers and accounting and editing and uh you know dealing with vendors or whatever it is so what you want to do is you want to take that that other column the stuff you don't like doing and you want to start bringing some stuff together are there things that are maybe similar in nature so for instance writing and editing for me are similar in nature so that can kind of start to be you know clumped into maybe one job description where that can be something that is delegated to somebody else right i went to uh, grocery shopping last night and I realized I'm like, I don't even like grocery shopping. You know, sometimes it's important to do these things so you have the contrast to understand that you don't like doing something or you do like doing something. And like Amy, my wife is away until Friday. She's been on a two week cruise. So I've been at home with the kids and my mom's helped out, which has been great. And I realized I'm like, I don't like doing the laundry. I actually don't even know how to use a washing machine until like a couple days ago, which is pretty funny. So I don't like doing the laundry. I don't like going grocery shopping. Um, I don't like juicing anymore. I think juicing is amazing, but I would rather just have juice delivered to my door. I don't like cutting the lawn. And it's funny because a lot of people like my mom and, uh, you know, people of, I guess, that generation, you know, they call they think that maybe I'm lazy or they think that, oh, you're, you know, you're too good to cut your lawn or too good to buy your own food. It has nothing to do with that. The whole idea here is that if you're overwhelmed and stressed and you feel you don't have any time, it's because all of these other little things are filling time in your calendar. I would much rather go play three hours of tennis than go grocery shopping. So if that's what I want to do, and that's going to lift me up and light me up, then that's what I want to do. Nobody else should be able to say, listen, well, that's, you sh that's not responsible. It is responsible. It's responsible for like lifting up my joy. And if I feel good, I'm going to be able to show up in the world in a bigger way. So one of the things that i'm going to be trying to find now or trying to find now is a personal shopper who i will pay to deliver groceries like we'll give them a list of everything we buy because it's more or less the same stuff all the time go to the grocery store which is like five minutes away buy the stuff come back there we go so that's one of the things that i'm going to do because i think it's a massive waste of time not not for me because amy actually does most of the grocery shopping when she's here but even for her going to costco going to the grocery store that's like it adds up and it's, you know, it's, I believe it's a waste of time. Unless you absolutely love doing it, you shouldn't be doing it. And that's the whole idea with this exercise is to get clarity on the stuff you love to do and clarity on the stuff you don't love doing. And it's really as simple as that. I love doing this, I'm gonna do it. I don't love doing this, I'm gonna give it to somebody else to do. Yeah, exactly, Josh. Free up your life so you have time to do what you love and what you excel at. Exactly. So Shiba says, I hate ironing clothes. Get someone else to do it professionally. Love creating stuff. Exactly. If all you did was create stuff, then what's wrong with that? Right? Like, you know, I, I think we live, like, there's people have these notions that, you know, you have to be doing other things. Like, actually, let, let's look at school, for example. Schooling is an amazing example of dabbling in a lot of different things and being good at none of it. For instance, my son Oscar is very creative from the age of like, I don't know, to one or two, he was like painting these amazing paintings 
abstract, obviously, like not like, you know, fully formed, but just like beautiful use of colors. And we framed uh, four of his pictures, his paintings, and we put them up in his wall in his bedroom still to this day. And now he's five and a half. So he's a very creative person. And for me to say, listen, you have to be good at math. You have to be good at science. You have to be good at this and this is BS. The whole idea and what I believe what we're moving towards, especially with the advent of the Internet and who knows what the academic school system is going to look like in the near future is why not just focus on one thing you're amazing at and become a master at that. That's the way they did it back in the Renaissance period. Michelangelo, Leonardo da Vinci, right? If you wanted to become one of these amazing uh, sculptors or painters or artists, you, you were an apprentice for like 10 years learning your craft and that's all you did that's all you did and some people might say well that you become a very one-dimensional person but i don't believe that's true because when you focus on one thing it frees up your time to do the other things that you enjoy doing right so in my business the less i do the more i'm able to focus on the few things that actually make a difference which means that i have more free time to spend with my kids to work out to go do a cryotherapy session, to play tennis, to travel, instead of working 40 hours a week or more with little mundane stuff that really other people could be doing. And the very fact that you're doing them is like sucking the life out of you. So I hope that makes sense for you guys. Car <laughs> Shiba, you carve eggs. Cool, that's awesome, right? Like whatever, whatever that is, whatever floats your boat, that's all that matters. And so, you know, it's, it's really, it's, it's really interesting to, to consider like when you take advice from people, right? Like, oh, you have to become, let's just look at the world of, you know, internet business. You have to become a great copywriter. Why? Copywriting is one of the most important skills that is going to help your business move forward. But if you hate copywriting, like literally hate it, then why not find somebody else who can write in your voice to help you out? Now, I believe there is there is um, a necessity to learn some of the basics because if that person were to leave, then you're kind of like you know left stranded with an inability to communicate in an influential manner. But one of the things that I find interesting, like when we like a lot of people compare sports to business, right? And this is one of those things where it can be a little bit deceiving sometimes. So let me give you the example of uh, a soccer player, because I played soccer, right? So in so actually, I'll use tennis and soccer. In soccer, we have guys like Lionel Messi, who plays for Barcelona and Argentina. He is one of, like arguably the best player of all time. He's unbelievable, and he only uses his left foot. He only uses his left foot. Now, I personally think that's a disadvantage, right? But as a soccer player, obviously for him, it's worked out well. As a soccer player, you can't delegate your right foot. You can't say, listen, I'm just gonna learn my left and I'm gonna delegate. I don't like heading the ball. I'm, I don't wanna use my, my right foot. I'm gonna delegate all that, right? Um, in business, you can delegate the things that you're not good at and that you don't like to do. Let's look at tennis. So I played a match on Monday against like, this friggin' phenom who just graduated from university who finished like third in Canada. And I'm like, wow, okay, this is a serious match. And I ended up losing in three sets, but it was an amazing match. And it was great to play somebody at that level because he was able to pick apart my weaknesses. Like I have a one hand backhand slice. So that's a very defensive shot unless you use it properly to become more offensive. But again, the fact that I have a one handed slice doesn't mean that basically what that means is that, that I just have to deal with it now. That, that's a weakness that I cannot delegate. So the only thing I can do there is improve that one-handed backend to become a little bit more of a threat and not a liability. In business, if you have a liability, let's say you're not good on camera, well, you just focus on writing. Or if you don't like writing, then focus on video, right? So it's about finding the things you're really good at doing and everything else gets put onto somebody else's, onto somebody else's plate. Um, the other thing with, you know, with that is like, 
here's the other thing to understand. Like we employ 12 people uh, on our team and a number of other smaller contractors. And the cool thing about this is that you're giving people the opportunity to do their thing. So when you start delegating stuff you don't want to do, you're giving that task to, that task to somebody else who does want to do that. So by you doing everything yourself, you're actually depriving other people of expressing their unique gift. So that's another way of looking at this. You don't like, you don't like cleaning your house? Well, guess what? Somebody else loves doing that. Let them do that. Just because we don't like doing something doesn't mean somebody else doesn't. This is a big epiphany I had a couple years ago. I was like, why doesn't everybody think like me? How would somebody, like, how is it possible somebody would enjoy cleaning? How is it possible that somebody would enjoy shopping for food? How, I mean, but there are people that love that and they're like, on the flip side, they'd be like, um, I would never want to run my own company. I don't know how those people do it. I would never want to be on video. I would never want to speak on stage. I would rather get hit by a bus. But that's the stuff that lights me up. So what you want to understand is that Everyone has their strengths, everyone has their weaknesses, and you want to partner with people that will compliment you. Um, yeah, so does that make sense, guys? Any questions with this exercise? On a related note, um, I'm going to be holding two workshops in November. One is going to be on content. The other one is going to be our funnel mastery workshop. Those are going to be taking place probably in the middle of November. One's going to be in LA. One's going to be in Orlando. If you want more details, if you're interested in attending, uh, let me know. I'll put you on the interested list. And uh, obviously it's by application only. We accept a maximum of 20 people. Uh, very, very highly curated so that you get personalized attention and all this goodness. So that's going to be coming in November. I'll you know, give you guys more details as we get closer. But anyways, uh, just keep that in mind. Middle of November, LA and Orlando, two days each. Uh, you can attend either one. You can attend both if you want. And uh, let me know if you're interested. I'll keep you on the VIP interested list. And uh, final thing I'll share with you before we, uh, before we finish off today is that this morning, uh, I'm just going to share a cool little um, health hack with you if you've not tried this yet. So this morning, I was playing tennis with my buddy, Eric Wong. And he also has an online business, so we're fortunate, it's funny, we're fortunate enough to, we normally actually play at this time on Wednesdays, but I said, listen, I have to shift the time because I'm doing these live sessions and I've got some interviews on, on uh, Wednesday afternoons. So we're gonna do Wednesday mornings. So drop the kids off at school, uh, play some tennis around nine till about 11. And everybody else who's playing tennis there are women in their like 50s and 60s, right? And then obviously men in that, in that age group as well. And it's funny because they look at us like, do you guys even, are you guys even members here? Like, do you, like, you guys are a bunch of vagabonds. And you're like, you know, 30 somethings and playing. You shouldn't you be at work. And we actually, it was funny because last summer we were playing a game around this time in the morning. And we had these people, these, these members come up to us and they asked us, like, they asked us, are you guys members? And we're like, yeah. <laughs> and we asked them, are you members? Right, because you know these ladies are in their sixties and they think that they can, you know, they don't have anything to do. So apparently we should be working, but it was uh, it was funny. So, anyways, um, played tennis the other night. Played tennis this morning. Had a workout yesterday. My body was like just like shattered, and so this morning I I went to do some cryotherapy. If you can see this, let me just make sure you can see this. So I don't know if you can see. So that's me sitting in a, or standing in a cryotherapy tank. And uh, my phone is cracked. It fell on the floor, so it's shattered. But it still works. I don't think I'm gonna get the new iPhone, that's for sure. <clears throat> that's, that's a topic for another day. So minus 124 degrees, liquid nitrogen, and this bad boy accelerates the healing process like exponentially. And it was uh, three minutes, if you've never done this, it's like 40 bucks for three minutes. And this is a great, let me just finish it. This is a great example of something you need to really understand when it comes to offers, okay? So you might think $40 for three minutes, that's crazy, or is it? Because here's the thing, are we paying for time or are we paying for a result? So let me ask you this, 
is it like when people buy your thing, we have this idea that they have to buy, so this is my New York Times bestselling book, they have to buy a 300 page book. But guess what? I could give you the answers of this book in one page. So would you pay $20 for this book? Probably because it's 20 bucks or so. But would you pay $20 for one sheet of paper that gives you the exact same outcome? For me, I personally don't like reading books because a lot of them are like, listen, I got the gist of it after a couple pages. I don't need to read 300 more pages. So think about this. When you're offering, when you're making offers to your audience, focus on the outcome. Focus on the tangible result. They don't care if it's a, a textbook, an encyclopedia, a encyclopedia like knowledge. They want the damn results. I would much rather just take three minutes in a cryotherapy tank than subjecting myself to an ice bath that I have to fill up with ice and then somehow get into it without like, you know, chickening out. Or, you know, going to a massage therapist, spending an hour there, not feeling as good as I would after three minutes of cryotherapy. So I think it's a really great example of not getting caught up in the fact that because somebody is buying your thing, if it's 50 bucks, 100 bucks, 500 bucks, they don't need more stuff. They just want the results. If somebody has, um, this is a, you know, a famous analogy that people use, you know, a person has a, a broken pipe in their house or in their bathroom. So the plumber comes over and the plumber does like one little thing. It takes like five minutes to fix and they charge them 100 bucks. And the person's like, 100 bucks, what are you talking about? It took you like two minutes. Well, the plumber responds by saying, listen, it took me two minutes now, but it's taken me 10 years to learn all this stuff. So I would much rather pay for a result than have the plumber sit in my house for an hour, taking time away from what, I, what else I would rather be doing. So think about that when you're making your offers. And this is something like the biggest reason people will refund your programs is because of overwhelm. They don't want more stuff. The days of like, then you get this bonus and this bonus and this bonus and this bonus and this bonus. Oh, and we're also gonna throw in 28 interviews. No one cares, nobody wants that stuff. It's overwhelming, it's too much. Get to the crux, the, the, small, the small hinge, the one lever that's gonna make the biggest result for them, and that's what you focus on, right? And it doesn't mean that you have to charge less because the outcome is still the same. You just position it in a way where you say, listen, you don't need a thousand things. I'm gonna give you this one thing and how much would that be worth to you if you could solve this problem? If somebody said, listen, Yuri, in three minutes, I could solve your shoulder pain and it never comes back again, how much would it be worth to you? That would be worth a lot to me, right? But if somebody said, listen, um, you just have to read these five textbooks and then do all these different manual therapies uh, and to get rid of the shoulder pain, that's, I mean, again, that's there's more work involved in doing that. Yes, you know, maybe I would do it, but I would much rather have, again, the magic pill. Let's be honest, we all want the magic pill. We all want the easy button. And in your marketing, you always have to keep that in mind when you're making your offers. Is you have, let me just draw this out for you. You have a spectrum between, um, let's say, I'm just drawing this out and I'll show you in a second. So you have a spectrum, right? On one end of the spectrum, you have the do the work, which is work out, eat better, clean up your diet. On the other side of the spectrum, it's the magic pill. Well, don't worry about any of that stuff. Just pop this pill and it's all good. And let's be very honest. It's a, Well, I can tell you from first and from firsthand experience, it's a lot easier to sell a supplement that promises a very specific benefit that could also be achieved by doing a lot more work. Right? But there's less resistance, there's less friction over here. So in all of the stuff that you do without becoming a sleazy, you know, sleazy, hypey salesperson is you want to move everything towards the magic pill as much as you possibly can without compromising your integrity. Because when you do so, it just makes things that much more compelling for people. Yes you have to do the work. Yes, let's be honest, things will be challenging initially, but this is as simple as it can possibly be for you. So think about that if that helps, okay? Do the work on one side, magic pill on the other. M try to get your people moving or try to get your marketing, your message moving towards the magic pill as much as possible without pushing the boundaries of like, 
you know, you'll lose 10 pounds by tomorrow morning by eating this one fruit, which sadly, I've seen far too many of those type of offers and I kind of like, it makes my stomach turn. So let's work with integrity, stay true to your core values. Remember that we're here to serve people with le like legitimate stuff that actually works and not some like snake oil nonsense. So there we go. There we go, ladies and gents. Thanks so much for joining me, guys. It's been fun. HPTV episode two, the love-hate exercise. Take action on it today. Um, if you want to share your findings, if you there's again, if you're watching the replay on this on YouTube or on Facebook, uh, share your findings with me. Let me know again what's the one exercise or one thing out of your list that you love to do the most. What's the one thing you hate the most? And I'm going to challenge you to really kind of think about well, that one thing I don't like doing. I'm going to look at you know maybe putting together a job description that somebody else could do for me. And yes, it's going to cost a little bit of money, but remember, what we're really after is time. Okay, if you want more time, if you want less stress and less overwhelm, you're gonna to have to pay for that. And that's okay because it's a great thing to work towards, right? Richard Branson spent most, most of his time swimming in Necker Island for, for as far as I know. And that's because he's got people that do everything he can't do and help build his empire. So yeah, there we go. All right guys, well, I hope you have an amazing day. Remember, I'm gonna be here every single Wednesday, 1 p.m. Eastern to 1.30. We'll be talking about some really cool uh, biz related things. Uh, on that note, actually, let me give you a sneak peek as to what is coming in our next episode of HPTV. And we'll have a cool video trailer coming soon. So we'll have a nice intro, which will be just, just for that, it'll be worthwhile tuning in. Just in case you don't like looking at my beautiful face. All right, so uh, next week, we have got a really interesting discussion, uh, an interesting discussion on the truth about grind, hustle, and working too hard. We'll talk about why, um, what working really hard and obsessing about stuff really actually means. And um, it, it's actually pretty powerful. And then the following week, we're going to do a marketing makeover. So I'm gonna take one lucky person and I'm going to uh, just look at your stuff. I'm gonna have a look at your business, have a look at your website, have a look at something. And again, if you're in the healthpreneur community, I'm going to be choosing, obviously, one of you healthpreneur peeps. If you're not, then, you know, uh, unfortunately for you. But the cool news is that you can actually just join us at healthpreneurgroup.com. Again, I'll type that into the chat here. So, again, once you're in the tribe, free group to join, uh, then I'll be picking one lucky person to do a marketing makeover with on uh, Wednesday, September 28th. It's gonna be a lot of fun. So whatever your deal is, we'll figure it out. We'll do, it's kind of like a little hot seat rendition. We'll do it live on the Facebook, live on the HPTV, and uh, it'll be a lot of fun. All right, guys, <clears throat> I'm losing my voice, I gotta go. Have an awesome day. Keep getting your gift out to the world. People need you, get your message out. Keep having an impact, and I'll talk to you next week.